Hey, what are you doing on March 6th and 7th? How about making your way to DX3 in Toronto for a two-day deep dive into digital marketing, digital advertising, and digital retailing? Along with a free exhibit hall, there are going to be over 40 sessions, including speakers from Microsoft, Salesforce.com, Google, Well.ca, Facebook, Lowe's, and Mountain Equipment Co-op. Come see what one attendee called a rare thing in the digital world. Register at www.dx3canada.com today. See you there. As promised, we are back with Mikhail Cho, who has come agreed to come back with my pleading to come back and actually do what we were supposed to do in the original episode, which aired on Wednesday. This is an addendum to that episode. You, if you haven't watched it, you don't need to, but you will find out a considerable amount of you know the history of Oomph, the history of uh, you know of launch this year, and certainly Mikhail's history as well. Tremendous story, tremendous story. So if you haven't watched it, you don't have to stop this. But at some point, I would go back and download that episode or go and watch that episode because it is really, really, really worth it. You will love it. I certainly did. It wasn't what we expected, but it turned out really well. And Michele, you haven't even seen it yet either. So you have no idea if it's good or bad. Yeah, yeah I'm looking forward By to Friday. it. By the time this airs, you will have seen it. So, uh, but, uh, so we're, we're, we've regrouped and we're going to talk about really these nine skills that you guys have determined and you guys walk people through in launch this year that you've determined are the essential skills to actually become what? A big man with an A or a big woman with an A on their chest, like app maker, right? Isn't that the ultimate goal? App maker. Exactly. Yeah, so that's exactly it. So you work up through these nine skills um, and they're in order of what you should be doing priority wise in terms of releasing an app. So it's much more than just the app making part. It's also the pieces of coming up with the idea and how to market it. So, you know, but you've done this uh, on purpose. You've limited the amount of information that we see or that we can interact with on purpose, right? You've spaced this out based on, on what? Correct. So, well, actually, when we were making uh, Oomph in the beginning, we we're like, what is the best way where we can figure out this process? And we're like, hey, let's make an app. Let's actually do it. Let's go through this thing. Let's take a, a prototype app and, and walk through this whole thing and, and see what would happen. So along that process, I documented everything that we were looking at and using and all the resources that we found that were the best. And we found that they're just everywhere. Like they're scattered all over. Apple has some good stuff. Um, but then you've got new things that come out with iOS 6 versus iOS 5. Stuff changes really, really fast. So we want it to be the one place where you're going to have just the best stuff and it's updated continuously and you can go through and it's very focused on just doing actions. So you'll read the resource and then you'll see the action that we did, like the action that we actually did ourselves when going through, through this thing. So it's based on real life, which is not fiction and it's all in one spot and we are going to get through it. I swear to you in 30 minutes or less, we're going to get through all nine skills it takes with a reason why it's important and maybe a little tip or two, depending on the time. So why don't we just jump into this right away? Uh, sure. Yeah, that's not good. I, I'm at uh, step one, app, app idea <laughs> creator. Um, but so, yeah. you know, when somebody, when somebody joins uh, launch this year, they are presented with those first two pieces, right? Which is when are you going to launch? You're going to launch it this year. You have three, and I, I now have 343 days left uh, until I launch. Right. Um, but the app, uh, app idea creator and the market investigator, talk about those two to begin with. Right. So uh, launch this year because we released uh, app idea creator, the first skill. We released it last week. So that's why there's two available now. Market investigator is the one for this week. So our plan is each skill will be pretty much on a weekly basis. Um, varied a little bit based on difficulty. So app idea creator, we start with that one uh, simply because we don't want you to get too far down in the process where you maybe second guess this idea or maybe you find that it's not working. So right away we start off with, it's called an app idea creator, but it's really app idea validation. So you're validating your idea before you do any code or any design. So 
whether you're a mobile developer or designer, this step is is necessary and it's going to save you a lot of time and a lot of money in the end because if you just sort of hopped into an idea that you thought was good and you didn't think about what your competitive advantage would be or anything, what, what exists in the app store, what works, what doesn't, um, you're kind of setting yourself up for some failure. So we're trying to diminish that, that chance of failure and what's cool is you don't need to know how to code or design to do this first step. So how, how do you validate? How do, how do you like? How do you validate an idea? Like, you know, is it is it about talking to people? Is there a step that you can give people right now? Yeah. So um, you know, there's there's the lean startup methodology, which is get your product out there, get something, get something even on paper, and go to a coffee shop and share that little sketch with some people. Um, but there's also the other side too, where build something that you yourself would use. And if that's good enough for you, then maybe that's your idea and maybe there's enough people that would also be interested in that thing. So we give people sort of both options and we point to a couple of resources that you can look at um, under the App Idea Creator that points to, oh, these are some things that you could try to help formulate that idea. And one of the things we do is have you take a step back and say, what is the actual problem that you're trying to solve? And then the, the solution that you think would be to that problem. So really bringing it back to the essence of your whole idea and not just saying, this is my idea, this is the problem that I'm trying to solve. Yeah, I, I, we often see this in the market right now. And, and you know, we've, we've talked about this many occasions on many different episodes of, of, on Tether.tv and This Week in Location-Based Marketing is that, it, you know, we yeah. shouldn't be uh, a technology chasing an idea. We should be applying a technology solution to an idea that exists or a problem that already exists, right? So never lead with the technology, lead with the, with the problem and then see what kind of technology fits. The same thing with mobile, isn't it? Exactly, exactly. And uh, I spoke with one of our customers last week and we spoke exactly about that. We, uh, I don't want to share his idea just in case, but um, it's okay. Case he has it's an okay. issue. It's just us. But, <laughs> yeah. but anyway, he had an idea and it might not have been possible on iOS. And, you know, it would be in my business best interest to say, oh, yeah, build an app and go through our whole thing. But what I told him, I said, you know, maybe this is something that you should check and do on a web-based platform or do it on Android or, or do because I don't think this can actually be done on iOS. So he, you know, if he hadn't have gone through this process of determining is this thing possible, looking at the idea, the problem and the solution, he may have gone way down in sort of the development route and found out at that point, which he might have spent a lot of his own time and maybe some money um, chasing sort of the wrong solution to a problem. It's always good to challenge yourself at the beginning. But then once you've done that, once you've kind of validated the idea, you said, listen, I, this is this is worthy of the next step. The next one is you've got here listed as, as uh, you know, market investigator. So you, the second skill is to what? Determine how these markets work, these stores work. Yeah, so you've got, now you're like, okay, this is going to be something on mobile. So there are specific things in mobile that work and that don't work, and there's things that exist and that don't exist yet. So the market investigator is all about that, that piece, going in depth into the mobile space that you're about to go into and learning what is there and what works and what doesn't. So we sort of bring it in now you're now you're going from way out here problem solution to coming in okay here's my market here's where i'm going to be so that's what we're going to teach you before you go into actually making something there totally worthwhile you know there's um you would do this if you're setting up microsites on the web right where you would do some keyword investigation before you went on bot you would see the competition you would you would understand your market prior to actually doing anything laying one line of code so so I can understand that. So app idea creator, you're, you're getting the idea, you're solidifying the idea, you're testing the idea, maybe you're bouncing it off a bunch of people. You know, I had a, you walk into a coffee shop and you ask people if they like the idea, right? Uh, you know, don't pick friendlies, go and find somebody who actually is maybe who, who doesn't know you, who will be honest with you, not family and friends. Right. Um, right. And then and then you figure out what's in there already, what the competition, what the landscape looks like. Um, and I suppose that all this is really, you know, kind of wrapping it up to, you know, what laying one line of code. You haven't done anything yet. But but when when do you get actually get into it? When do you start to, you know, code? 
Right. And, and what's interesting about, about these two, you know, you're, you're thinking, oh, yeah, this is really self-explanatory. Yeah. You know, I could, I could do this. But what we're trying to do is make sure that you do this. Here's the action. Write, you know, in the, in the actual steps, we say write three things or sketch this or do this. So there's always an action there to make sure that it's easy to understand what you're supposed to do with that resource. And we noticed that was missing a lot from us. Um, yeah, so in terms of actually learning to code, that's coming, uh, I believe, yeah, there's actually three skills before you're going to hit that. So it's, it's coming really right, soon. So those two skills have been open to it to me. And now the third skill that isn't open is prototype inventor. So you have right. to become a prototype inventor. What does that mean? Right. So we, we still haven't touch code and prototype inventor, you're still not touching the code. And what we're trying to do here is say, if you're gonna, if, even if you're gonna hire somebody, it's much better to go up and say, hey, I thought this thing out. You know, this is what I'm thinking. I, I have it sketched on paper. Yes, it's maybe not um, fully coded, even as a web app, but we have some tools in there that you can use. You can create and draw every all the screens of your app and then put it on your iPhone and make it clickable. So we have those those tools and they're all available and many of them are free. So we're encouraging you to sort of create that base where you can then at least go and say, if you wanted to hire somebody, oh, um, this is how I want it to function, exactly like this. And it's a lot clearer. And then that person that you might want to work with you kind of says, oh, he kind of actually cares. You know, he kind of cares what he's what he's doing. It's not just, I want Facebook plus Tumblr plus Twitter with a, with a dash of path. You know, it's, it's a lot uh, more refined and clear than that. And that's what we're trying to do in that you're, step. You're, you're walking, this is a prototype. So obviously uh, you're walking through what it would, how it would work. And, and my guess is that you would come to, sometimes you come to dead ends where you think that this just doesn't work. It can't be done or, or it makes you rethink the, the functions, you know, uh, the UI, the user experience as well. That's, that's what comes out of this. Right. Is that right? Right. And what's awesome is you're just on paper. So again, you still haven't wasted um, valuable code resources. Right. I, like, I like that. So far, so far, this is all brain work, right? This is all a little bit of uh, elbow grease and a lot of brain work. I come up with your idea. See what's out there right now. Test the idea. See what the competition looks like in the app stores and then start to put the, you know, you're, you're starting to gradually put the pedal down by then designing something, put something into a prototype that can be, I mean, I mean, it could be wireframe, right? It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to visually look like the app, but it has to be, you have to think it through. And that's what prototypes. Yeah, exactly. so, then, so then, then, uh, you know, oddly enough, this one, the fourth, the fourth skill, you have to become an app icon designer. Yeah. Like, you know, you, you never think of that, right? Which is like, this yeah. screen, wherever mine is, this screen becomes so important when you start to see, I mean, the apps, like look at the, I mean, you're not really going to be able to see them very well. You, you, the, you, the listener are not, you, you can't even, you can't even see this at all. It's beautiful. But I mean, the, the design of the icon is important. Yes. And we thought a lot about, you know, should this step go here or does it go, you know, closer towards the end? And there's two reasons why it's there. One is when you're, you're gearing up to, to create this, you're about to hit some code and you're about to hit actually designing the app. It is going to be a tough and, and lengthy process. So the icon is sort of a very creative and fun process before you're getting into it. And it's something a little bit lighter that you can, you can handle and learn about before going into something that's much bigger. You know, you're designing something that's 512 by 512 pixels. So that's pretty cool and it's very confined and you can get a, a sense for just that design skill. So that's one reason. And the second is people really like icons and seeing them and they're beautiful and it's a very shareable piece of content. So the reason we have it actually created here is you can start to do that sort of pre-launch hype by having just that piece. So you, you haven't designed anything yet, but you've got that icon and you've got, maybe you just have a, a page with coming soon on it, but you have the icon there. So there's some identity that's starting to be created and it feels like it's becoming real. This is this is the first asset that you're creating ultimately that is going to be a part of your, your product. So yeah, this is your trailer. This is your teaser. These, these are the things that you do that lead up to creating anticipation for the launch of the app, isn't it? It also solidifies it. Boy, does it ever, you know, it, it sets the tone, the design tone for your app, doesn't it? 
Right. Exactly. Yeah, and if and, and you know, I'm not saying that the the app that you create the first time around is going to be great, but you right. can refine it. You have the you have the ability to do that, but you have to become an app icon designer. I love that. It's one of those things that you never yeah. think, and it should never be a throwaway, should it? What are the what are the what are the reasons why it should never just be kind of an afterthought? It is a huge factor into why people decide to download an app or not. So you've got when you're in the app store, you essentially have three things that people are looking at. You've got your title, you've got a little bit, that one little sentence, and you've got and your icon and your screenshots. Yeah, there's four, but I put title and um, little description it. together. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there's a huge decision being made right off of something that, it, that seems so small. So one thing that we say there is pixel for pixel, the icon is the most important thing that you will probably design. Because if that is not good, people will never see your, your actual mobile app design. They're just not going to be interested. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? There's this little, tiny, little thing that, that is inconsequential in so many ways once the app is on the desktop. Is, is that important to get done properly in order to be able to get people to download your app? So it is worthy of the fourth skill you have to be able to master in order to be able to become an app developer. I love that. Right. All right, so um, so that's app icon designer. So for those of you who are counting, we have app idea creator, we have market investigator, we have prototype inventor, and app icon designer. Four. Now our fifth one, your fifth one here, is mobile designer. Now this is you're basically trying to figure out what uh, is this? This is a UI UX piece. Is it uh, you know uh, a capabilities piece, a rounded corners piece, a slide, a bump? What what are these things? What is your, a mobile designer? What's that skill? Yeah. So so the first thing here, and obviously in this step, the whole goal is to teach you how to design your app. But the first thing we say is, are you going to hire somebody? And this is what you should look for because right now is when you need to determine that before you even go through these steps. Yes, you can look down. We sort of say in the first one, look down at what, what's about to come because this is big and there are professionals and it takes a long time to learn this. So we set the expectation up front. You know, this is something, if you want to create something of quality, it's going to be difficult. Here are the resources. But if you want to work with somebody, you've already sort of created some things where you almost have a, a, a brief. You've got your project more or less in order where it would be Pretty, pretty, uh, pretty convincing to go out and, and try to hire someone and bring someone on, maybe even as a partner, to work on this project. So this is a natural breakpoint, isn't it? Right. Yeah. So this is a big. This one and the app producer, the next two right here, are the big chunks, and you know it's the it's the actual creation of the app, and the whole thing that we're trying to do is there needs to be more quality in the app store. So yes, we're showing the quality resources, but at the same time, if that's something that you just don't want to handle or you can't handle right now with the workload, um, we offer a hiring option. And right now we do link to some sources that we're, we have, uh, we're working on partnerships with, um, but it is something that we are actively working on swooping in and taking care of. So being able to hire people who are ready to work on projects that are coming through this. What do, you, what do you think is a determining factor at this point to decide? Like, I mean, if you're looking at this, you mentioned one probably that you don't have any time. What would, what would be another one that would, that, would, that would push you down the path of outsourcing or hiring a developer at this point? Yeah, I think it's, um, you know, there's, there's time and there's money which is the, as the big factors. Um, we point to that a lot. I, I'm a big fan of learning um, learning it yourself before you hire somebody. So that's another reason why this the skill is there because you can at least, okay, you say, I don't want to hire somebody right now. I'm going to go through this. I have the time. You kind of go through and you're like, wow, I really respect what these guys do. So now when you go to hire somebody, there's a different level. There's like, I know how complex this is. I know that this takes a lot of work and they won't sort of cheapen the profession. You know, it's, it's not, you're my coder and this is what you have to do. It's more like we need to collaborate on this because I know how how complex it's going to be. So you're teaching respect here. I exactly, like I like that. I mean, it, it dovetails really well from mobile designer into app producer. Um, you you got a subtitle here that says basically learn how to make an iPhone app. It's not easy, is yep. it? 
Not, not easy. easy. Not not easy at all. So I mean, what, yes. what, what are the pieces yeah. of this? Yeah. So again, the, the first thing is take a look at what's about to come. If you need to, to hire somebody, we've got the resources and we can help you do that. But if you are interested, here is where we have a, a partnership in the works where you can actually learn. So you can learn the basics of iOS. We have linked out to tutorials as well. So you can actually learn some of it. And again, it's very similar to the mobile designer where, yes, this is tough. And we're setting that expectation up front. So again, it's the respect for hiring a professional if you want that, that to come in. And yes, the expectation is this will take a while for you to learn. Um, but if you want to learn it, let's do it. We're going to give you the resources. Are, are there people who are ja just naturally should just not develop apps? Like, do you find that like, you know, there's, there's a type of person that just is like, look, you know what, whatever you do, you get to a point here where you're looking at mobile design or uh, that skill or app producer. And it's like, don't get back up on stage. Just hand that off to somebody because you know, there's a, there's a high risk of failure, even if it's a good idea. How, how do you, how do people decide that? How do they determine that they just suck and they have to find somebody to help them? Yeah. Um, so what's interesting along this route, we have at the end of each sort of an action that you can do within. Oomph. So if you have created um, a design yourself from the mobile designer section, you can push that to our community. So you will actually get some feedback from people there. You suck or, hey, this is great or maybe improve this or this. So you're going to get something. And what we're doing is actually getting it. You can get it straight from home. So you don't have to go to that coffee shop. Awkward. Hey, this is uh, not my app, but what do you what think? Do you think? This, is a, you know, so this is a friend's uh, app, right? Uh, <laughs> this is a thing. Of, yeah, I saw this lying around. What do you think of it? Well, I mean, that makes that makes a lot of sense, right? Is that uh, to, to offer that kind of a service, which uh, validates it one way or another. And what I love about it is, is, is hopefully, as we talked about in our in the longer episode around honesty is what you need. You need that your oomph community to be as honest as you can without without being too terrible. But but you have right. to be able to say, look, get off stage. Don't sing anymore. You know, find somebody to help. It's a great idea. But the way you're implementing it is completely wrong. Go find somebody who's experienced that can actually accelerate this for you. Right. Right, exactly. All right, so we've gone through this. We've gone through this process of uh, kind of ideation. We've gone through the process of research. We've gone through the process of, uh, you know, icon design. And now we've gone through the, you know, app design phase and the producer phase. And then another detour here is that you got to become a what? A video producer? <laughs> yeah, so now you are back in, you got your marketing hat. So this is, you're switching back. So you were just creating your app, you're working on that, but you're still pre-launch. But these are some very, very important pieces. And you'll notice um, if, you're, if you're looking at TechCrunch or you're watching the stuff that people are writing about, mobile reviews websites, a lot of them have videos, a lot of them has those demo videos that look really, really good and encourage people to, to get the app. Because essentially that's what it is. It's a trailer video, just like a movie. You know, have you ever have you ever gone to see a movie without watching the trailer? You know, I think that's pretty rare. So it's something similar in in mobile. So we actually have experience. We've done two videos ourselves without prior knowledge. Yes, we had some design expertise and code expertise, but we didn't know how to use the programs that that were there. So in this step, we actually break down exactly what we did to create these videos, and we did it pretty much with no budget. So we do offer the option, again, up front, uh, if you'd like to hire a pro, this is where we recommend, um, but here's the steps. And we break it down again into, into straight actions. What do you think is, what, what do you think are some of the most important pieces to, to be in that trailer? Because you've got, what, a minute 15, a minute 30, that, yeah. that's kind of, you gotta tell the story and you gotta tell it so yeah. that it's very easy to understand and compelling enough for me to make the next action, the download action. So what do, you, what do you think right. has to go in there? Is there one thing that you, you noticed in your experience that has to be in that, you know, in that trailer video? Yeah. What's cool is since we started with the idea creator and you're defining problem solution, the huge thing that you want to start off with your video is the problem. Because people resonate with problems. They don't resonate with yeah. solutions. And you can, go, you can go and test this. You know, if you're talking about... Um, even, even if I talk about Oomph, if you, I just start off and say, oh, we help people who are making apps do da 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 they're kind of like, eh. 
But then if you say there is hundreds of thousands, well, now over a million apps and all of these people are trying to figure out how this system works and how they can compete. Now it becomes a story and now it's getting interesting. So that's what it's all about. So that's what that first step idea creator, you're, you're starting to write the story of your, of your app. What about, I mean, do you have one, do you have an example here uh, of, of some video that you've seen out there that is like this, they, they nailed this effectively. That, is there something, yeah. something out there? Yeah, so we have, we have two and, and one that I'll refer from because we, we uh, watched it a lot was the Hitmonk video. So Hitmonk starts off, it's a pretty funny story. It's those little stick figures and there's a guy and a girl and he says, so you want to travel across the world to see your honey. Okay, so there's, there's a problem, and it's funny, and it's cute. And then they say, but there's a zillion travel sites, so that's the problem. So how do you figure out? So now people have resonated with that, and then they introduce us. You and your honey need a vacation. Go to hipmonk.com and select your destination. We sort travel options by agony and display the results in a handy timeline. Easy. Next, search for hotels. Hotels are ranked by ecstasy. We want you to get the most joy for your dollar. Hip maps are a great way to see the best neighborhoods for food, nightlife, or even vice. Yeah. Hipmonk.com. Take the agony out of travel search. Okay, so the Hipmonk video is, is, a, is a good example of that. And, and uh, certainly, I, I believe this. I, I mean, part of the marketing materials, do, does this go up prior to the app launching? Obviously, this is kind of, this is a teaser, a trailer, upcoming yeah. Yeah. So this is something that you would put up pre-launch. So all of these steps are enabling you to get ready for launch. So yeah, pretty much every, actually everything here is, is a pre-launch thing that you're doing. And you're putting this, you're, so far you're putting all of these things, the, the write-up, the description, the video, the icon, the gameplay, the notion, you know, whatever it is, the app, the, the functions of the app, the problem that it solves, you're putting that up on a website, on a microsite, right? Exactly. So... Behind the scenes, at the end of each one of these, when you finish the action, we are creating a page for you. So you don't have to worry about that website. You don't have to worry about anything. We are taking all of that content and just making a page for you. So when you're done with this, it's done. It's ready. You don't ready. have to worry about that, that, the creation process. It's all being done on the OMF platform. All exactly. Right. Okay, so we are now, we've got our directorial debut with video. Uh, and then we're jumping right into this. You become a, a what? A media kingpin. You have to get in front of media, don't you? Yes. And consistently. Yes. Like you mentioned this in, in the interview. Uh, for those who haven't, for you who haven't watched it or listened to it, is that, uh, and I'm talking about you out there who haven't listened. Um, you you talk about this is that you created relationships for Oomph and the launch of Oomph and the launch of launch this year. You created relationships with the with the uh, with the media in order to be able to maintain. The conversation, not just kind of launch at that stratospheric level and then come crashing down to earth after that. So media is very important. Right, exactly. And this is teaching you more than just getting you know press for your launch. This is teaching you how to maintain the relationships because inevitably you're going to go like this: launch day, you're going to come down. Okay, so then you're probably going to need to do something again to get you going back up. So if you can get press again on something that you're doing, you're gonna go up and now your baseline will be a little bit higher. You're gonna go back down, but it's gonna be higher. So that's what you're trying to create, those blips where you're, oh, you're going up and then there's a sust higher sustained level that's long-term. And, and every blip, what you would hope is that you, yeah, you, land, you land a little bit higher than you did last time. Your, low, your right. low is higher than it was last time and your highs are higher. It's like right. being, Right. And obviously your app will probably be improving and you'll be having different features um, that help spur the growth that are built in. Um, but having those injections that are kind of coming in um, is really helpful. Right. So media is so important. And this is pre-launch. This isn't the day of. This isn't something that you bring right. up at the end. This is you, you start when? Immediately? Uh, so what, what we have is actually... Part of the media kingpin is creating the, the actual assets. So creating the press release, putting together the press kit. Um, we recommend all of that being ready at least two weeks before you're submitting to the app store. Because there's, there's gonna be some back and forth. You're gonna find some, some, uh, some journalists that you wanna reach out to last minute and you just need to make sure that 
it's organized and it, it goes at the same time as your as your app launch. What do you think? Um, what do you, What do you think about people who give away uh, advanced copies? You know, like. Um, who who actually allow the media to get a get a hold of of the app uh, or the game? Is that something that you would recommend doing? Yeah, that's that's something that's pretty effective. Uh, if you're using if you're using invite codes or if you're test using flight, um, test, yeah. yeah test flight and giving them some early access, um, that's something that we'll dive into even more um, in that media section. How to effectively use those. And in the future, we're hoping some tools will be inside of Oomph actually to help manage that stuff. So yeah, that's that's a that's a that's an important piece. I would think that, and and you know, there's got to be a creative way because media everywhere, especially the app review guys and the influential folks that you want to have on your side, they're getting inundated with free app after free app after yeah. free app. So there's got to be a way that you can elevate beyond just the free app. Yeah, you need to stack the cards in your favor. So, and the more cards you can have on your side, it's going to help your chances. And it's it's hit or miss. You know, a, a lot of journalists are very busy, so you might just be hitting them on the wrong day or this or that. Um, but if you can reach out to 20 or 30, our experience, you're going to hit on 25% using our techniques that we've sort of lined up here. So um, that's what we're really trying to help you do is Target effectively, that's one card in your favor. You've got all your documents in order, that's another card in your favor. You're using the launch plus the invite, plus you've got your video. So those are all cards that are going to be lined up that help you get noticed. And look, if, if you are just starting, if you're just launching your app and it's a unique idea and you think that you've had some great feedback, you should be reaching out to me, Rob at Untether.tv, because I'll feature you. I feature everybody. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I don't. Okay, so that is the eighth step. Become a media kingpin. That's the eighth skill. Now, the ninth skill, right before you become app meister, is you have to become an app store detective. Yeah. So this is, you know, the coin term app store optimization. This is where you are learning how to list your app, um, how to do your title, your tagline which images you should be putting up for your, your screenshots, which one should go first and last. So we break it down, again, based on what can help you on launch day, like what would be the best way for you to structure your things in the App Store. It's very important. I, you know, we, uh, at one of my previous companies, we launched an app, in the, obviously, in iOS, like everybody else did. And um, the feedback was great. I mean, the, the application was incredible, but we put up these crappy, screen captures right and you can imagine right. what that does and, and this was very right. early on in the in the app store days and, and so we put it up there and it took weeks for them to come down but they were grainy they were they were blurry uh, and you know how many uh, the feedback that we got from everybody all the design people that i know everywhere was just like you know what you you have to replace those photos like they have to be hd they have to be some of, of some quality and sure enough, when I went on, I looked at them and I said, like, oh, it's embarrassing. Right. And that has an impact on the brand and, and people's willingness to download an app, doesn't it? Exactly. Yeah. So, and, and one thing that's cool that we do in here is the resources are updated. So iOS 5, the search is going to be different than iOS 6. It's going to be different than iOS 7. So we continually update this resource. So if you are a part of launch this year, you'll get a new email saying, hey, this is the new thing happening on iOS 7. Don't go all over the web looking for it. It's right here. And then so you, you go through, you master these nine skills, right? How long did it take you guys to get through that process, these nine skills before you actually launched the app? Yeah, so um, it took us probably, including all the development and everything is ready, shipped to the App Store. Um, two and a half, three months, if I remember correct. So that's how we've sort of stretched out these these skills. That's that's the plan, the release plan for these. Uh, uh, so those are the those are the nine skills. And the last one, the 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 accumulated uh, skill set that you have developed through these nine skills, means that you are, you have become what an app master, an app an app, app maker. maker. I like your, I like your other one though, the app the maestro. App or maestro, what? yes. Meister, I like that one. The app Meister. Well, there you go. There's a coin frame. Better <laughs> register that domain name. So, so those are the nine skills. And I don't know that um, that we could have summarized it any better. Those are the nine skills that are necessary in order to be able to come up or actually when you you know create an idea, 
establish the idea, validate the idea, and then start building and developing, deploying, marketing, and and actually, um, you know, benefiting from from actually launching an app. Because so many people put it out there without any thought, and we see what happens. They just they get relegated to the discount bin, or then no one's ever seen it or bought it bin. And I can't imagine that. I right. can't imagine putting effort into it and not selling, or pushing one single download. That would that would be devastating to me. Um, yeah. So that's it. Those are the nine. Those are the nine skills. Yeah. So pe- that's it. It's, it's, it's pretty simple. All, all you have to do is just those <laughs> things, right? And you got an app. <laughs> yeah. It's it's not it's never that simple. But so uh, so we should drive people to launchthisyear.com or oomph, yeah. uh, oh, you know triple o m f dot com and uh, and yeah. and sign up. You know, explore, and this will give you a good you know indication of whether or not you have the capability. The patience, the ability, the desire, uh, and the, I don't know, fortitude to actually stick with it. So the next time somebody walks in and says, you know what, I build apps for a living, don't scoff at them. Understand that this is a very difficult thing to do, right? And I made an analogy that I'll bring up again. It's like, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's if you've ever been a waiter and you go in and you eat at a restaurant, you tip very well. The reason you tip very well is you understand the pain that that waiter or that waitress or the server is going through at that moment. You understand. And it's the same thing with developers. Show them some respect, right? And this is a good way to do it if you want to understand how, what it takes to, to build an app. So go to uh, launchthisyear.com. All right. So now that we've spent two and a half or three hours together, Mikhail, <laughs> I, think, I think we've got what we need here. Uh, so what I'm hoping is that people will take these lessons and and hit up launch this year oomph.com to uh, to register and participate in this yeah thank you rob it was awesome and i want to follow up with uh, all the results of this yes well i i think you should do a telethon like you know you, you've got you you should <laughs> you should see how many people at the end of the year launch and, and we will do that maybe we'll do a mid a midterm you know six months in sometime in the summer when it's nice and warm where we are we will sit down and yeah. we will have an update and see how things are going how does that sound sounds right. good well, we've been speaking again. This is I, I, was, I said this is the week of Cho, right? The week of Cho. Uh, Mikhail Cho, who is the co-founder of Oomph and the co-founder of Launch this year. Go to both of those sites. Register if you ever think that you want to build an app. There's some, it's just a great resource. And, uh, you know, from, from a mobile guy, uh, I really appreciate that you guys have put this together. And, and uh, if you're thinking of building an application, this is the place to start. Cool. Thank All you, right. Rob. Thanks thank so you. Much. And everybody, thank you for watching. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, Putting these earbuds in and listening to this uh, really means quite a bit. And, uh, you know, reach out. If you found value in this, reach out to me or reach out anywhere uh, on OMF or uh, launch this year. Appreciate it. See you next time on Untether.tv.